This is 14.3 gastrointestinal tract part 2 notes. The essential question is, what are the features and functions of the organs of the elementary canal? After the stomach comes the small intestine. It is a muscular tube extending from the pyloric sphincter, which is between the stomach and the, the uh, small intestine. Remember, the pylorus is the last portion, the funnel-shaped portion of the stomach, and then it's the um, connected to the, the first portion of the small intestine. Then the in portion is called the ileocecal valve because the last portion of the small intestine is called the ileum and the first portion of the large intestine is called the cecum. There is a chemical digestion of fat begins here. Majority of digestion, chemical digestion occurs in the small intestine. So all of the digestion of the carbohydrate including starch and the digestion of protein finishes in the uh, the small intestine, and also uh, fat digestion or lipid digestion. It is also the site of nutrient absorption into the blood and the lymphatic vessels. Remember the lymphatic vessels are necessary because food comes from the outside and so it can contain a lot of bacteria or other microorganisms that can make you sick, so the lymphatic vessels clean those up. Primary movement in the small intestine is peristalsis and segmental movement. And remember, chyme is the watery um, substance of the the chemical, the digestive juices from the stomach mixed with the food. It is a watery, watery substance, and that continues on into the small intestine. The regions of the small intestine: the first portion, it is the shortest of the three but it is the widest and this is where it is the first portion of the small intestine that is attached to the stomach and this is where the chemical digestion of all those food that I talked about starch protein and lipid occur in the duodenum the middle portion is called the jejunum and it is the main site for nutrient absorption so all of the digestion gets done finished in the duodenum and then it moves into the jejunum uh, to be absorbed and this is the middle length it is the middle section and it is the middle length. Duodenum is the shortest portion, jejunum is the middle length. So the last portion that is connected to the large intestine is the ileum and there is some absorption going on in the ileum. So here in the diagram, notice the first portion here in the purple is the duodenum. The middle portion in the teal color is your jejunum and then here in the pink is your ileum. Notice the location of the small intestine. It is in the lower abdominal area. And what we mostly times that we uh, refer to as the belly, we are referring to the small intestine. So when we have pain around the umbilical or the navel region, it's the small intestine. And then surrounding on the outside of the small intestine is the lar large intestine. The special structures found in the small intestine is the villi, which are finger-like structures. And when you look at the wall of the um, small intestine, you have these finger-like projections. These are your villi. And what they do is when you have a short surface like this that the food comes in contact, it is a very short surface. But when you have the finger-like projections, it gives you more surfaces where food can come in contact with the uh, wall of the small intestine for more absorption can occur. But not only do they have villi, they have something called the microvilli. So each one of these villi actually have little finger-like projections along it. So they say that the small intestine can be the length. If you stretched out all of the microvilli and the villi, it's the length of a football field. Again, the large intestine, remember, surrounds the small intestine. It is a site of absorption of water and some electrolytes and produces vitamins. So there is no digestion going on in their large intestine. Their main job is to absorb water. Remember when the food enters these 
a large intestine from the small intestine, it is the chyme. Chyme is very, very watery. Um, when you think about when you have diarrhea, that wateriness in your uh, stool or your feces, that is the consistency of chyme. So the job of the large intestine is reabsorb all of the water back out of the chyme to sol uh, solidify the, um, the waste. And once it does that, then it carries it out and stores it in the, uh, the last portion of the large intestine to be eliminated. Now, even though the large intestine does not participate in digestion, there are bacteria that hang around in the large intestine that help digest some nutrients. And a lot of the, t uh, lot of the times, things like vegetables and things like that um, is hard for us to digest, so the bacteria kind of help us digest that material. And certain foods will cause um, accumulation or production of uh, gases and when that gets released we call that flatulation or farting. Regions of the large intestine, cecum is the first portion that is attached to the small intestine but also hanging off the cecum is a structure called the appendix. They don't really know what the function is but it's almost like the size of your pinky and they're just kind of hanging off. The colon is divided into four sections and it is named according to how the food, which direct the direction the food moves in. So ascending colon is the first portion that is attached to the cecum. It is on the right side of the abdominal region. Then it turns into the transverse. It goes across uh, down the just underneath the diaphragm and then it goes down the left side which is the descending and then it makes a little curve, S, sigmoid means S, S curve, to join with the rectum, which is the last portion of the large intestine. And that the function of the large intestine, I mean the rectum, is for storage of feces and until it is eliminated. And the word for eliminating waste is defecation. So starting with the first portion, here's your cecum which is the portion that is attached to the large in, uh, small intestine, then ascending because the food is traveling up, then across the abdominal wall is the transverse colon, and then, so this will be the right side going up, then across, and then going down the left side is your descending colon, and then this portion that makes this S sigmoid, that's the sigmoid colon, and then this portion that comes straight down is the rectum, and that the last, the opening to from the rectum to the outside is the anus. Features of the large intestine, it contains structures called tinea coli, which creates the, the haustra, which is are the bulges along, or pockets along the large intestine. Movement is slow, and sluggish in the large intestine compared to the small intestine and it has uh, it's not a steady movement like it is in the small intestine uh, the food will kind of sit there in the large intestine for a while inside the one of the pockets the hostra and there will be a massive movement into from one hostra to the next so there's only a certain amount of movement that happens in the large intestine whereas small intestine the movement is constant the two structures you want to look at is the haustrum. Haustrum is singular. It is a one pocket, one bulge. So all of these are haustra, which is plural. And then tinea coli are the line, this band running across the large intestine. And what's going on is the tinea coli is shorter than the large intestine and that's what is creating the bulge in the large intestine. The anus is the opening where defecation occurs or elimination of the feces, the solid waste comes out of and remember that the rectum stores it until it is in, uh, eliminated. There are two sphincters that control defecation, 
There is the internal sphincter, which is controlled by the involuntary smooth muscle, so you have no control over it. And then there is the external sphincter, which we do control. It's the voluntary skeletal muscle. And this is the one reason that we can make it to the restroom before we go to the restroom. The presence of feces in the rectum, what is what triggers the defecation reflex that need to go to the restroom. Here is a general diagram of the processes that occur. Uh, remember that ingestion of is taken of food in. And then propulsion is the mode that the food is moving down the digestive tract. And the area that that occurs is swallowing, which is happening in the pharynx or the throat. Then we have the peristalsis happening in the esophagus, the stomach, the small intestine, and the large intestine. And that is the forward uh, movement of the food down the digestive tract. Then we have chemical digestion going on in the mouth by the presence of saliva that contains enzyme. Then we have the stomach that has specific enzymes. And then we have the first portion of the small intestine, du the duodenum, that carries out chemical digestion. Then there are certain areas that mechanical digestion occurs. So mechanical digestion occurs in the um, mouth by chewing or cutting or breaking the food down by the teeth. Then we have the churning happening in the stomach, the twisting motion and the smashing of the walls of the stomach that break down the food. And then segmentation or the mixing or the smashing of the food in the small intestine also. Then we have absorption occurring in the small intestine, uh, specifically the ileum and the, the jejunum and the ileum in the small intestine, and also water reabsorption in the large intestine. Then after all of the water is reabsorbed into the, um, into, back into the body, and then the whatever is left over, that is solid feces, that is carried into the rectum, it is stored there until it is eliminated through defecation out of the anus. 14.3 notes homework. Number one, name the regions of the small intestine and their main functions. Number two, draw and label the regions of the large intestine. Number three, how are small intestine and large intestine similar and different in structure and function.